In this tutorial, I'm going to take a look at generating a properly interleaving pattern that we can use with tissue. So if you watched my previous tutorial on this, I generated a pattern that was corner to corner matching, but it didn't quite properly interleave, and I thought I would show you how to do a properly interleaving pattern. So the starting point is with the geometry already set up with the exception of the pattern. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. I'm going to press Shift and A and generate a plane. And in this case, I'm going to make it just two centimeters. And then come into edit mode and we're going to subdivide it. Let's look at this in the top view. And the way that you want to do this is, is by taking it up to three divisions, which is four polygons across. The thing to remember when generating these patterns for tissue is that you want the corners to match up or you want the edges to match up. So for instance, in this case, I have a point here on the edge and a point here on the edge. So these are all going to match up and they need to match up. So I've set it up so that I can create some geometry where these edges, their endpoints end up matching up from cell to cell as tissue stitches everything together. And this is also set up so that when we get a repeating cell down here, we'll have an equal spacing. So I've got two rows here, one row here, and then in the next cell, there would be one row for a total of two rows so that everything matches up. So in this case, we're gonna make it look like we have interweaving wires or sort of threads of metal if you want to think about it that way and we only really need to do one of them so we're going to start with this by coming into vertex mode taking one vertex here let's pull that down a little ways and i'm going to take this value in fact let's just change this to 0.2 to make that easy take this one here and type in 0.2 then i will take this edge that we've deformed, Shift and D, Escape, and then press the P key to move that to become its own selection. Let's go ahead and temporarily hide this original plane, and we'll call this Source Profile. Now, we actually just want curvature, but this is sufficient data to generate curvature. So let's do this. Let's bring up the context menu and convert this explicitly into a curve type. It doesn't really visually change, but if we press tab, we're now in sort of a polyline type of curve. But we can convert this explicitly with set spline type over to NURBS. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see. In fact, let me do this. Let me come over here and change my viewport to make this a little bit lighter so it's a little bit easier to see. But there you can kind of see there's a bit of curvature. So this is a NURBS curve. Let's come down to the curve data properties and we'll scroll all the way down to where it says active spline and go ahead and say endpoint U and it'll stretch the curve all the way to the end point. So you see when I leave edit mode, we can see that curve. So we can come in and we can select these. Let's set the pivot to the bounding box and I can press S, Z, and you see how I can scale that up like that. Let's go ahead and generate some geometry from this. This is the benefit of having a curved data type is that we can come down to geometry, the geometry entry, and down here where it says bevel, just in round, just type in a value like that and ta-da, we have geometry that we can use for our wire. Option Z goes out of X-ray. Let's configure this a little bit. If we come up to the top, let's take this down a little. Because in this particular case, I'm going to set up the geometry so I don't have to apply subdivision to the final generated cage that tissue generates, which can be kind of large and complex. And then I will come back down here where it says resolution. Let's increase this just one to five. I think that'll be sufficient because this is going to be a pretty small scale. Now we want to see what the relationship is like when we replicate these into the pattern. So leave edit mode. The object's pivot is at the origin point, which is what we want. And the origin point is derived from the original plane geometry that we had set up. So let's go ahead and 
press Option D, and then press the R key, and we want to rotate around the Z axis, then type in 90 or negative 90, whichever works, Shift R and Shift R, and there we have the interleaving pattern that's going to form the basis of the, what's called the component that's applied to the mesh. But we want it to be a little bit more interacting. We don't want quite this gap sitting in between the uh, parts. So let's select one of them. They're all linked, so you can edit any one of them. And we want to select the bottom and the top. Press the period key, just make sure that our pivot is at the bounding box center. And then, I, I'm, my eye is sort of looking right here. Press the S key and then Z, and I can scale this until those match up. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could say, well, maybe we also want to come in here and thicken those up just a little bit. And I think that works pretty well. Let's leave edit mode. Now we want to do one final thing to it. In order for this to work correctly, these points here at the end, these ends, they need to match up. And right now, because of the curvature, they're not. So we need to straighten that out. Let's generate a, an original that we can keep in case we mess up and we have to go back. So press Shift and D and then Escape. And I'm going to call this source profile dot original. And that I will hide. Okay. And then let's take all of these at the same time. And we're going to convert these to a mesh. They're still going to be linked together. So a change that I make one to one will be made to all of them. Let's go into isolation mode and look at this in the front. So you can see now we are in polygon edit. Now I'm, I need to come back in and change the background again because we need to be able to see the grid lines. So in this case, I'm going to darken it so the grid lines are quite apparent. So let's come in. The end point here, which happens to be on the grid line, this needs to be flat. So there are a couple of ways that we could do this. Uh, let's just do this. Let's select a single edge here. And we need to come up to our transform orientation. Let's set this to normal, but we need to record this as its own sort of transform orientation. So come back here, click plus, And when we double click here, we can pull this up past this edge. So it's this edge right here that I'm looking at. Press, press Option Z to go into X-ray. We can see that. So now we need to switch back over to global so that when we press the K key, we get the ability to align exactly along the global Z direction. So click, press the Z key, and then C. So it projects all the way through. Click, and there we go. So now we come over and we delete those. Come over to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Edge. We can reuse that edge orientation because it'll be the same. It's just mirrored. Pull that out. Switch back to global. Then press K. Come right here to that interacting grid line. Z, C, click and return. Three key and we will select those and delete those faces. Okay, so now when we go back, all of them are matched up. These are pretty small. They're like in the couple centimeter range. There's going to be a very slight amount of variance here, and there's probably a weld tolerance function that tissue is using, but I'm going to be just extra careful. Now we need to join all of these into a single mesh. So let's come over, do a join function. This is where you could look and you could just do a quick test to make sure, option Z, that these are exactly flat or very, very flat. If there's a slight amount of variance, because we kind of eyeballed the knife tool, um, they're probably just based on eyeballing it very, very close. Otherwise, I could come into edit mode and select like this so I could see that I've got both. And then do an S, Y, 0 just to make sure and flatten it. But I'm going to guess that these are so close that there's a tolerance weld that these are well within. So I think we're going to be OK. Now that we've gotten that done, let's zoom out, come back up to the basket here. Let's kind of quickly run through the process. I'm going to 
duplicate this so that I've got my original that I can come back to. We have subdivision applied. Let's go ahead and apply that. And then we come down to our remesh. It's way at the bottom. Over to quad, quad flow. Let's set this to 2000. Click OK. OK, there's the final quad reflowed mesh. We want to apply subdivision to it. That way, uh, tissue uses it for curvature. And then we come up and we select first the component and then the body. And then we come to tissue, tessellate, make sure you're in patch mode, smooth, and merge at the seam points. Click OK. There we go. So now we can look at this. And there we have, no, it's a little hard to see. There we go. So there we have a properly sort of grid, interlocking grid mesh. I hope you found this to be a useful tutorial.